Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another day. This is the day the Lord has made. We can choose to be, to be rejoiced and be glad in it, or we can choose to wallow around and feel sorry for ourselves. I would suggest that we declare this is the day the Lord has made. Let us, not just me, not just you, but let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? It's our choice. It's our decision. Father, we love you this morning. Glory to God. We bless and praise and magnify the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name. We come boldly before the throne of your grace this morning, Father, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help today in time of need. We ask that you would bless us this morning, Father. Open the eyes of our understanding. Teach us your ways and show us your glory. We pray in Jesus' name and everyone said amen. And open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter, and I'll say it again, Proverbs chapter 11. We're going to just discuss one verse from Proverbs 11 today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. One verse 31, Proverbs 11, 31, certainly in a 15-minute session, we cannot give the entire book of Proverbs. But as we teach these morning lessons, uh, as we come around from month to month, we'll discover different uh, Proverbs uh, that we can't get to today. And God always gives us a refreshing button, doesn't he? We get daily bread and a fresh revelation of something different something fresher in his word uh, from month to month, actually from day to day. He can read something today and read it tomorrow and he gets a totally different revelation out of it. But we can only cover so much in a few minutes, so let's begin. And uh, with verse 31 of Proverbs 11, if the righteous receive their due on earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner? Let me read it one more time. We're just going to cover one verse here. If the righteous receive their due on earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner? I must admit, and be as transparent as I can be, that since the election, I mean, the Bible says men's hearts will fail them from the things they see coming upon the earth. It is not easy to sit back and watch what we've seen in this country in the last six months. Uh, it's not been easy for me. You can sometimes think, and Satan will see to it that we do think and feel sorry for ourselves, that why do we have to keep the rules but certain people don't have to? Why is it that some people have to do what's right and we would fear the Lord if we didn't do it, and some people just I mean, they throw caution to the wind, man. They, they don't care. They're just out there living and doing. I often say to Tanya and, and anybody that rides with me in a car, it's a, all, you want to see what society's about? Just go right across town in your car and watch how people, the anger, the meanness, the lack of letting people letting you in and just cut you off and jump medians and change five lanes without a blinker and just cut people off. and It's crazy. And society is so, it's just, it's just like it's gone berserk. We know we're living in the last days, and we know that, that in the last days, we know that darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But he said, the glory shall be seen upon you, shall be risen upon you, and the Gentiles, the lost, will come into your light. It doesn't seem like we're making a difference in this earth right now. It doesn't seem like that the righteous are prospering. But as, as I read Proverbs 11, I tell you, the Word of God corrects your thinking. By the time you read the media, even conservative media, you can sometimes be so dissuaded and so discouraged. As you can, as all you can see is the, the damage that's being done. And it just seems like there's nothing to stop it. You depend on one person to come through, they don't. Well, you've got another chain of command that can stop it, they don't. And you see another chain of command, and they don't. You think, man, I mean, we're in trouble. But as I was reading this, Proverbs 11, 31, again says, um, if the righteous receive their due on the earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner? As I read that, the Spirit of God reminded me that we, we read a certain scripture that we will receive from the, in the Gospels, we'll receive a hundredfold in this life, in this life, with persecution and in the life that is to come. There will be a recompense. 
The, if the righteous receive their due or their recompense, their reward in the earth. We're not just going to be rewarded, friends, when we go to heaven. There's going to be a reward right here on earth. And even this scripture and even the gospels declare that we receive a hundredfold in this life and with persecution. So you're not just going to go to the other side and collect your $200 and pass go and collect your 200 bucks. You're going to get battered. The enemy is going to do what it can to, dis to dissuade you, to discourage you. But God says, if the righteous receive their due in the earth, how much more, how much more the ungodly in the center? When I read that, I think, I, I looked it up and, and looked in the Greek words because we see that when you, when you read that you receive your due, that word recompense means, has a twofold meaning. It means you receive correction and blessing. And when you really read it in context, I've always read it like the righteous are going to be blessed in the earth how much more the wicked and the, and, the, and the ungodly, and it almost appears like the wicked and ungodly are going to get much more than us, but, act, but that, that word recompense means that you, are, you receive for the wrong you've done in the earth, and you receive for the right that you've done in the earth. And God is a fair God. I mean, if, you've, if you're sowing, the Bible says, do not be deceived, God's not mocked, whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. If you're a, a born-again man and you get someone pregnant out of wedlock, I mean, God's not going to kill that baby for you. You're going to reap what you've sown. But also that same person can walk in the spirit and be, and be a person of integrity in their business and, and, and they can reap other rewards. Just because they failed in one area, they've received, a, uh, maybe they've hurt their reputation, but it doesn't destroy you in every area of your life necessarily. Because God says you've received the just recompense for what you've done. If you've done good, you're going to be rewarded by God in this life. Glory to God forevermore. But if you've done wrong, then you're, you're going to go through some correction. And we're going to see it. And, and, and what encourages me is not that you know, we're, we don't want God to correct us, but we don't really have a choice. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 says, For the Lord disciplines the ones that he loves. And he chastens everyone that he accepts as a son. If you're born again, you're going to get corrected, disciplined by God. So there get, there's, there's, going to be, there's going to be a correction. He says he, he prunes back all the branches that bring forth, that don't, anything that doesn't bring forth fruit, he cuts it off. But even the branches that do bring forth fruit, he, he cuts some of them back, prunes them, that they can bring forth even more fruits. What means this? If God corrects us, and, and, and we're his children, sometimes we think, and, I, and the lost definitely feel this way, the lost feel like, I don't believe in God, therefore there's not going to be any recompense for what I've done. God is the God of the Christian. He's not my God. Let me, let me say this to you. God is everybody's God. Well, the devil may be their father to the lost person. Jesus said, you're your father the devil. But God is still their God. Understand, God is my God and God is my Father. But God is the lost man's God too. Amen. He's just not their Father. Do you understand that? God is the God of all flesh. I want to read this to you. Psalm 47, verse 8. says, God reigns over the heathen. Isn't that an incredible word? Psalm 47, 8, God reigns over the heathen. Just because, and we see the arrogance uh, of so many non-born-again people that just, that are in authority, that just, they, I mean, they just think that they're, that they'll never be found out. There's an arrogance and a haughtiness. Well, we know the Bible says that, that pride comes before fall and a haughty spirit. We're in power. You can't do anything to us. We're insulated. We're protected. I got news for you. You may not have anybody fighting for you in the natural, but God, glory to God, hallelujah, praise God. Boy, I feel the glory. Hallelujah. God says that he's the God over the widow and the orphan, and he will plead the, he will plead the cause of the orphan and the widow. God tells and, and warns us, don't you dare come against the orphan and the widow. Because I, I will judge for them. I am, their, I am their reward. I'm their rear guard. 
You take advantage of someone that is a, an orphan or a widow, and God does not need permission to correct you. You keep taking advantage of righteous people, and God will only tolerate it so long. He, if, he, if he corrects every son that he receives, what do you think? And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm preaching really to myself right now, uh, uh, including myself, because sometimes I think that the wicked are going to continue to be wicked and do what they want to do, and there'll be no recompense. Let me tell you, the Word of God says quite differently. And the Bible says it's the long-suffering of the Lord leads to salvation. It is of the tender mercies of the Lord that the, that the earth is not consumed. That God, is, that God sees the evil that's going on in the United States. He sees the evil going on in China. He sees the evil going on in every country of this world. And it appears that some leaders just have no fear of God. They'll do what they want. And God is only for the Christians. God is the God of all flesh. God does not need your permission. He does not need your approval. And anything and everything you do cannot correct God and cannot stop God from correcting you. God is the God of all flesh. He reigns over all flesh. And he's brought down empires that were a lot longer and a lot stronger than the United States of America. He brought down the Roman Empire. They actually brought down themselves. And God gave them years to repent, and they would not repent. They just kept becoming more self-indulgent. The great, the, we, we, we don't learn from the Roman Empire. You're, you're bound to repeat the same mistakes. And I'll tell you, look at Italy today. Rome and Italy ruled the world, and now they're no longer the top echelon of great powers, military, economic powers. They're not. There was a day they ruled the world for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, several hundred years. I don't have the exact number, but it seemed like it was in between six, seven, eight, and, or nine hundred years. The Roman Empire, I could Google it real quick, but I've only got a few minutes to go. Google it. The Roman Empire didn't last for just 200 years like America. This has been several hundred years. They were number one. Look at them today. There comes a time we see all the, 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 the nations, the, the, different, the Babylonian Empire, the Persian Empire, and you look at them today, and they're Iran, they're Iraq, and they used to be the top, the leaders. Egypt used to rule the world. And you look at all these countries today, and none of them are, none of them are superior to the United States. So the United States will have news for you and every leader that God is the God. He may not be your father, but he's your God, and he will judge, and he will correct. And if God corrects his children, how much more? Look at the scripture. How much more? Not, not, not the equal amount. If God disciplines his own kids, what do you think he will do to you if you're living a life to destroy righteous people? Glory to God. God put up with Saul of Tarsus, and Jesus finally met him in the way. And stopped him. He was destroying Christians and righteous people. And Jesus, the God of the New Testament, the God of all mercy and grace, came and stopped Saul of Tarsus. And he didn't stop to call him into the ministry. And he didn't stop to bless him. He came to stop him. Stop him from killing Christians and putting them in prison. So God allowed it for a season. And then God judged him. He appeared to him and smote him with blindness, knocked him off of his horse. Even the people that were with him heard the voice of God, but they did not see him. P uh, Paul, excuse me, it was Paul, but it was Saul Tarsus. Saul saw him and was blinded by the glory of God. He says, who are you, Lord? He goes, I am Jesus whom you persecute. And Jesus came to stop him in his tracks. It's only when Saul of Tarsus says, who are you? What would you have me do? That Jesus then said, go into the city and there it will be told you. But Jesus didn't come to call him into the ministry. Calling him to the ministry was the plan that God had him from the beginning. But until he submitted his life and surrendered it to the cause of Christ and believed and bowed his knee to Jesus, Jesus was not calling him into the ministry. He was not putting him in the ministry until he repented and said, My God, your Lord. And that's what he did. Who are you? I'm Jesus whom you persecute. Jesus came had had enough of him feeding Christians to the lions and imprisoning them. And it stopped that day. At least it stopped from, from Saul of Tarsus, who was responsible for putting more in jail and prison than anybody else. If the righteous receive their due on the earth, means that God does correct us. Look, and this is when I was reading it and showing you. If God corrected David, who's a man for God's own heart, and God still corrected him. If God corrected Moses, who smote the rock, what makes you think God's not going to correct other nation leaders who have no fear of God? He goes, not only will God correct them, but he'll correct them much more than he did Moses and David. We, we should walk in the fear of the Lord. Because I tell you, when you're a leader, God, was, God will treat you, leader, 
the way you've treated your people underneath you. Every leader in the world, and every pastor, including me and everybody else in the world that's a leader, should understand this. From the way that you measure it out to your people is the way that God will measure it to you. That's my time. 1 Peter 4, 18, if the, righteous are, if the righteous be recompensed in the earth, if the righteous be recompensed in the earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner? How much more? I've gone from being angry about certain leaders to becoming almost mindful of the mercy of God. God have mercy on them. Because I know as a, as a spiritual leader, God's corrected me about many things. And God says, if I've corrected you, how much more will I do the person that doesn't even try to live for me? I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. We may want to change our ways and not pray for God's judgment, but for God's mercy upon leaders of this earth. That God would have mercy upon them, show himself to them, before he has to correct them in a way that they will not enjoy. Praise God. I'm not going to fear. The Bible says, I will not fear what man can do unto me. We see a lot of temptation, a lot of attack upon the righteous today. But I'll tell you what, it's not the body, it's not us that needs to fear the Lord. It's those. How much more? If we live in that constant, God can correct us if we do wrong. How much more is God's promise to correct the unjust? Let me tell you. If you're getting away with things today, you're not getting away with it. It's God's mercy that's allowing you to give you space and time to get it right, to make it right, to stop and amend your ways. The Bible says the long-suffering of the Lord is salvation, and his goodness leads, this, leads to repentance. We should thank God that we still have some freedoms in this country and pray that God would bless our leaders today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up President Biden to you today and the Supreme Court to you. United States Senate and the Congress men and women of this country and, I, and every governor of every state of this union I'm asking you to open their eyes of their understanding the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord Lord turn their heart to the direction of your will for their life have mercy upon them and God bring your goodness to them give them extend your timeline of mercy but God I'm asking you that you protect the righteous in this nation and then throughout this world from ungodly leaders. And Father, I'm asking you to step in. And if they don't repent, God, I'm asking you to step in. And I'm asking you to, to like you did with Saul, to stop, to show yourself to these men and women and show yourself that you are God. Protect your people, Father, the day you, you will step in and you will protect your people. There's coming a time you will step in for on our behalf and you will speak on our behalf. We won't have to fight them, for you'll do our bidding for us. And Father, we ask that you will touch these men and women's hearts and minds in Jesus' name and have mercy upon them, that they do not have to experience the chastisement of the Lord. For you are the God that reigns over all flesh. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next week.